This is going to be a look at some of the plays that Tyler Huntley made on the Ravens' game-winning touchdown drive against the Broncos yesterday, and and also a, a chance to look at all the guys who touched the football on the drive. And that's the thing that I think is, is really um, interesting. So many guys were involved. Some certain guys were not involved on that on that last drive. I don't think Demarcus Robinson had a catch. I don't think Deshaun Ro- uh, Deshaun Robinson had a catch. I'm not sure Gus had a carry, you know, but time was, you know, not in our favor there, obviously. So it's going to be a look at that. And then some of the individual efforts that were made, some of the toughness plays, particularly Isaiah Likely. Uh, and then guys like Kevin Zeitler, his his two blocks or three blocks down on the goal line on Tyler Huntley's touchdown. A couple of the things, one thing at least that I think maybe Tyler Huntley missed, and hopefully some examples of how he's keeping his body in position to go through reads so quickly. Uh, now, some people put it on Twitter. Uh, you know, when I say he's a, a one read guy, first of all, I'm cosigning someone else's assessment of it from last year, but it's not meant in a negative way. It's, it's meant in a positive way. It's like he's going to take what's there immediately. And, I mean, look, the proof is in the pudding. 27 of 32 against the Broncos. Yeah, it was only 187 yards. Let me ask you this. If we come out two by two with Tyler Huntley playing quarterback against the coverages the Broncos played yesterday, why couldn't he go 40 for 45? If we played him twice another game, why couldn't he go a combined you know, 62 for 70? They would have to change coverages the Broncos, and the moment they change coverages, then other things possibly open up. They kind of kept everything in front. They get away with, once again, staring in the backfield um, because we don't, we very rarely, you know, pump fake to one side and come back to the other side, or we, we don't look people off enough. We kind of get rid of the ball super quick. Uh, but that is the whole idea of what, Tyler, of what Tyler Huntley is doing, going through the progressions quick, at least two on, on many of these plays. I do have some notes for some of these. So this is going to be a second and six from the 13, and this is the play that um, Isaiah likely gets hurt on up top. The Broncos are horribly misaligned to this, and I'll, I'll break it down a little bit once we look at the play one time. It's the second or third guy there. At first, I thought it was like almost a little bit of helmet to helmet. It's not. I think it's just incidental contact as he's making the tackle. Happens to be a shoulder that I guess popped out. Let's talk about the Broncos alignment. They got two guys standing within about a yard and a half of each other into the boundary. So we have, yes, one of them is Mark Andrews. But we've got two here, and we got two up top. Let's, and then also, too, the running back is up top to the field. So we have guard, tackle, one, two receivers, running back, that's five, and then quarterback and the center count as a half. So we, as the Ravens, have six to the field, and they have five. There is no way for them to defend all this space, particularly once the running back goes out into the flats. There's no way for them to defend it. They are defeated by alignment. And you can see it's a quick, easy completion to likely. Running back doesn't even go out in the flats. He didn't have to. We already had conflict because of the space that was there. Second and six gets us to a third and one. All right, two plays later, I believe. Three plays later, first and ten from the 19. Going to be a completion to Prochet. I think this is the play where Huntley shows you how active he is with his base while he's going through progressions. Now, he is fading back, and I don't give you the end zone angle on a lot of these, to be honest with you. I, I'm trying to get this content out as quick as possible. Watch him go through the progressions here. Clearly looking to the right. I'm going to start and stop this player multiple times so you can see how active his feet are, how he continues to reset his feet keeping a, you know, a solid base, kind of, you know, betrays his base here by fading back, finds Prochet open, left-hand side, seven-yard gain. I'll let you watch it um, in live time. And again, just talking about how he keeps his, his base in position to throw the football in the direction that he's looking. Cool job by Prochet. Prochet's open another time on this, um, on this drive. Seven-yard gain. All right, second and eight. Pass is going to be complete to Andrews up top. We're clearing out the middle of the field by motion in the running back to the side. 
And I think we did this three times yesterday that I was aware of, definitely two times on this drive. Andrews is the backside X. He's the backside receiver, singled up by a corner. Huntley gets rid of it quick on the slant. Makes sense, right? Late in this, you know, if we, if we for whatever reason, if Andrews was not open, let's say this linebacker was kicked over some, you know, we'd possibly have the opportunity to throw underneath to Prochet. But Andrews is wide open, beat one-on-one -on -one coverage, five-yard gain, and we get the personal foul, which kind of you know advances the drive, moves things forward for us. That personal foul, along with the two incomplete passes that the Broncos threw with like five minutes left, maybe five minutes and 20 seconds left, that's the difference, in, in if you ask me, in the timing of this last drive. Because it would, that 15 yards, it would have probably taken us two plays to get there, two short completions by Huntley. But I just don't see how the Broncos were able to stop the short passing game. Third and five, Andrews, I mean, it's obviously pass interference. They're soloed up down here with Sertain on him. We got quads up to the top side. You'll get two in-breaking routes from the top side of the screen. Robinson and then Prochet. This is the one I'm saying if we, didn't, if we don't go backside to Andrews, we're going to have Prochet open late here. Round about in this area here, right by the end in Ravens, somewhere around there. Outside linebacker gets out leveraged. Prochet brings it back to the middle. And you see we the, the linebacker is reacting to Huntley throwing the football. Okay, so he's moving when Huntley starts to pull the pin on the grade grenade. I'm not saying that we should have pump fake there and going back to Prochet. That's not my point. I'm using this to illustrate that they are easy to manipulate in terms of us starting to throw the football. I think we, we had opportunities to maybe pump fake to one side and come back to a complimentary route because we know guys are going to move. If you want to complain about the Ravens coaching on offense, you know I'm going to try to give you something specific. I don't think we looked at it enough and said, hey, let's run this particular concept, whatever it is, you know, let's pump, look over here, pump fake over here, and come back to the backside. It will be open. How, how can you know that? Well, run it one time or run something similar on the front side. So run, when I say the front side, the side you pump fake to, run a concept over there. Have him pump fake to it. Run something different on the backside. Don't run the backside seam or slot post and then come back to that the next time. I'm saying there's ways to set it up without betraying your intentions, and I just don't feel like the Ravens' offensive staff was there in terms of setting those things up. All right, second and 11, you've already seen it twice, likely against this inside linebacker. Again, they've got the nickel down to the field, really close to this inside linebacker who appears to be trying to keep you know inside leverage on number three, which is Andrews. And then up top to the, to the field side, we've got, again, two – over three, but really Jackson is not in play here. This is Isaiah likely soloed up against Jewel, complete mismatch. Uh, there's just no way for him to do anything and prevent likely from catching the football. If he was to step up and get closer or maybe even, God forbid, uh, press him, likely would just slap him and, and run by him. Complete mismatch. Is this? It really illustrates, if you ask me, what Isaiah likely brings to the table. Big body, catches the ball. Able to make people miss, particularly linebackers when they're that where there's that much space. That one and the personal foul really got us going, if you ask me. End zone angle, same play. You see the leverage? There's not a single receiver in and in, in the horizontal conflict we're putting them in. There's not a single receiver on screen. And you see there's only five defenders, one second level defender for the Broncos. Just putting a lot of conflict or or horizontal conflict on their defense. Huntley works through these things quick, man. I don't know what you want to call it. You just, there's no BS about it. Get in there, get the ball out. Different philosophy from what we use when Lamar is in the game, seemingly. But we have had times where we, you know, we operate like this with Lamar at quarterback. All right, two plays later. <clears throat> three, I guess three plays later. Third and three. I just don't like this call for multiple reasons. Um, I think Falele really struggled yesterday. I'm, I mean, in certain cases. I'm not saying he didn't do certain play. There weren't certain things that he did well. Very slow out of his stance here. Um, almost as slow as a play earlier this year 
that we illustrated. We had multiple instances of our O-line being slow out of their stance, even on this last drive. Stretch concept to our right. And watch this linebacker get width and then jump back inside. And it really causes problems for um, Morgan Moses to get back to him. I feel like Moses kind of loses focus of who he's supposed to get. 47 jumps back inside. If Moses stays on his track and just runs on to 47, Linderbaum is doing a good job taking over. Zeitler's doing a good job taking over. I'm not sure that Powers was ready for some of the guys the Broncos had. And if, and if Moses can work up to him, I think we've, you know, we've got the possibility of a seam here, four or five yards at minimum. Because we've got a wall. I'm talking about the wall that's created with these guys. But the front side inside linebacker was able to jump back in there quite easily and make the play. Falele can't take over the backside D tackle. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to scoop a guy who has you out leveraged, meaning the play is going this side. Look at the helmet of 99. It's a full three quarters of a yard, maybe a yard, in front of Falele. So he's got Falele out leveraged. He's not getting any help from Powers, but I just don't feel like he's finishing this off at all. Really baby stepping once he gets hands on. I thought he had six or eight plays where he looked a little slow compared to the guys we were seeing. Horrible play call, if you ask me. Third and three. Horrible play call. Compare that to the third and five where we threw to Andrews and got the DPI. We're not giving ourselves an opportunity really to get the first down there with Drake. I mean, I guess if we block it better, we do. I'd like to see us throw the ball on that third and three, pass the, the yard to gain, at least give ourselves two shots to get the first down, if you know what I mean. All right, ensuing play, really brilliant, if you ask me. Oh, sorry, this is the, the same play from the All-22. Brilliant job, if you ask me, of our staff. Recognizing that when we have the running back on the same side as Ricard and Duve goes in motion toward it, everyone knows it's QB power read. So we initially, and you don't see it here, we initially were under center. Why? because we didn't want the Broncos to pick up on it. We didn't want them to know. We didn't want them to be pointing. If they knew, if we lined up with Drake over here, well, let's, let's move it forward. If we lined up like this, this safety, Simmons, or some safety, should be over here. So they can get the bonus player to the side where we're running the sweep, and then someone else can help with the quarterback. Conceptually, I understand what they're doing. It's what everybody tries to do. Right, you got the sweep to Duve, and you got the lead blocker with the halfback. It's two guys potentially running out to the edge. What they're trying to do is get someone outside the running back, in this case, a D end, and then they're trying to get someone inside the running back. Now, the lines are not drawn perfectly because, you know, Drake is going this way. So, what they want to do is get this guy to be the front side guy outside of Drake, and then get this linebacker to be inside. To me, the, the whole problem for them is this guy's do, defending nothing. It's not that player's fault. It's not Simmons' fault. It's credit to the Ravens' offense because we were able to line up in a formation that didn't look recognizable to them. And you don't have the video of it here. It's just not available on NFL.com. Huntley was initially there, and Drake was there. Looked like just regular pro slot. And then we motion back, run it. They didn't have time to adjust and recognize Zeitler really slow out of his stance there, but on this fourth and two, Huntley's able to get three yards and convert it. Zeitler played well. You know, this is just an example on this play of him slow getting out of here. Moses is asking him something. As we're getting ready to snap the ball, seems to have messed up the flow of Zeitler getting set and getting ready. Look how slow he is getting out of his stance. I mean, Linderbaum has stepped on his foot because of how slow Zeitler was getting out of there. Very rare. Great job by Ricard. I've got to give him credit. Great job here. Him and Falele working on his four eye. Ricard, I mean, that's a D tackle. That's an NFL D tackle. Stays on him, gets a little bit of, um, you know, down block movement there. And that's it. We've got a two way go now with Huntley. Falele's not in a position to pick up 47 because of the alignment. It's just impossible for him to go get him. 47 is going to scrape over the top. There's just no way unless, you know, 
And it's again, it's credit to the Broncos. They're stemming this guy who's inside of Falele. They're stemming him outside. So if he knew, if Falele knew that's what he was going to do, he could just inside release and, yeah, he could go get the linebacker. But then he doesn't help Ricard with the combo here, and I do think that actually helps. So it works out in our favor. Just the way the game works sometimes. They stem, which is a smart move by them, stem by the Broncos, stemming them to the play side, and it actually ends up helping us. As opposed to just lining them up there, where by rule, Falele might have inside released and Ricard be left alone with 99, we might not have had as much of an opportunity to down block him. I'll show you this one because, A, it's an amazing play. Play of the game. Um, I said it on Twitter last night. How incredible is it that a backup quarterback and a, and a third-string running back, that's disrespectful to Kenyon Drake. Like, but but depth, depth chart-wise, he would certainly be considered behind Gus and behind J.K. if they were all healthy. But those two guys made the play of the game. Really cool, if you ask me. Watch Huntley's feet. <laughs> I like the concept here. I really do. You'll get the all-22 in a moment. It's snagged flat over here to the right. And then you also have the over concept by Andrews, which I think could possibly be open in this area here. Huntley sees it, but he sees it a little bit too late and decides not to throw it. He sees it now. But he also knows that Justin Simmons is down here outside the hash dealing with the snag by, I think, Duve. I think it's Duve. So he goes smartly goes away from it. It's first and 10. He didn't want to make a mistake. Watch his helmet again, and then you'll see the routes here in a moment. So you can confirm what I'm talking about. He's on the snag flat now. And I think he's now looking at Justin Simmons as he's coming back to Andrews, which is option three. Decides not to go to Andrews. And again, you'll see the all 22 in a moment. So you'll see the angle that Simmons has and where a Huntley would have had to throw the football to get it to Andrews without putting him at risk or giving Simmons an opportunity to knock the ball down or even pick it. Great decision. Three great decisions, really. How quickly? Watch it one more time. Super quick. I just love his attitude. Like, let me come in here. Let me get the ball out. Get it into these guys' hands. Let them make plays. All right, so Simmons is going to drop down. Corner's going to drop back as we run snag flat or just curl flat. Like that. And then Andrews from the other side is going to run the over. And somewhere in this area, if he if we throw it like here, somewhere in that area, it's a possibility of Andrews catching it and he'd be gone for a touchdown, all right? But if we throw it any more closer towards Simmons in a moment, you'll see it's a possibility of it being picked or intercepted, and that's why Huntley goes through it. Goes through the progression, boom. He's on DuVernay right now. He sees Simmons covering him up. Comes back to Andrews, and you can see Andrews is flashing now. Again, this ball, I mean, this is the route that he's running. And I think if he catches it somewhere in this area here, that it's a touchdown. Simmons is, I don't want to say out of position. He's um. He's not in position to stop us from completing that route. This safety is in position you know, to recover and possibly tackle Andrews inside the five. As it is, Huntley makes what I think is a smart decision because he got to that you know, he got to that part of the progression, the third part of the progression, and didn't think that Andrews was open. Comes back here, amazing play. I think this is his fourth option, guys. You got two options here. One, two, three, and then comes back here, four. I'm not sure that he looks at Oliver, and if he does, you know, it's part of it. He is. He actually is looking at Oliver here. As he worked through all five guys in one play. That's pretty rare for a backup quarterback. Um, and, and, you know, maybe you may think I'm overextending, you know, that credit to him. But I'm just not sure how you can watch his helmet from the end zone angle. And then watch this. I didn't pick it up from the end zone angle, him looking at Oliver. But it certainly looks like he does after he moves off Andrews. One, two, snag flat. Three, Andrews. For Oliver. Now, I had paused the screen there, so maybe he didn't actually stop to look. Run it back one more time. Hopefully it's not annoying to you guys that we – I think this is a great play. I mean, this this play is the, could be the difference between being 8-4 and four and 7-5. and five. Maybe he didn't stop on Oliver at all. Maybe he just glanced at him. 
because he understood the concept. Beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful stuff. Let me know if you're as impressed by that play as I am. Crunch time, 59th minute of the game. Backup quarterback able to make that play. That's rare. That's rare. This is a great call. Now, Ben Powers gets blown up. Kevin Zeitler does an amazing job. Why is this a great call? Well, we go empty, and you think, well, it's a pass play. You know, maybe something in the flats, you know, maybe a corner route, whatever. Nope. We run, like, what looks to me to be, like, quarterback zone. I mean, look at what we're doing up front. We're just, everybody's stepping this way. Falele is off balance. Powers is getting pushed into the backfield. When you get the end zone angle, man, Kevin Zeitler, holy moly. Amazing stuff. Here. Steps out to help Moses first. Gets him expanded, comes back, helps Linderbaum. And then picks up the linebacker. Now, is the linebacker going to stop the play? You know, I don't know. Huntley probably be able to power into the end zone anyway, but point is we were short on time there, and we needed every little bit of effort that we had. Kevin Zeitler gave it. Awesome decision to see us running behind him with the quarterback. I suspect that we're gonna we're supposed to be working this way with everyone, and then Ricard's going to come back and kick someone out basically to give Huntley a two-way go, either, you know, front side like he did hit it or on the kickout block, you know, by Ricard, maybe maybe bring this thing back underneath that kickout block. Belele isn't able to work up to 47, which I don't, you know, think he should have been able to. 47 is just tracking the ball. Played a great game, 17 tackles. Awesome, awesome final drive. I, I'm still in amazed. I've watched, this is now the third or fourth time I've watched it tonight. Still amazed that uh, Tyler Huntley was able to pull that off with how bad our offense was for so long. A couple of points. I feel like you could, having watched it now, I'm going to say something that you know might sound crazy. And you tell me what you think. If, if it's possible to put him in that situation 10 times against that Broncos defense yesterday, and I mean 10 independent situations, not... 10 times in a row, and the Broncos can adjust. I mean, 10 times. How many times do you think Huntley leads us down to score? And here's why I'm going to tell you I think the number is seven. Because he had everything he wanted, progression-wise. I mean, on the last drive, the only ball that was thrown near a defender was the one-on-one -on -one thrown to Andrews, which was intentionally a back shoulder fade. And if he doesn't, you know, go to Andrews for whatever reason, like let's say Justin Simmons stays over there to help out. So so it's, you know, two on one essentially in the Broncos' favor. Let's just be simplistic with it. Huntley probably comes back to that concept on the backside of the screen where I showed you that Prochet was coming wide open, probably for a huge gain, you know, 10, 12, 14 yards. So my point is, from what I saw on this final drive, looking at it tonight, it looks like to me Tyler Huntley was able to execute these pass concepts repeatedly over, over and over again. The coverages the Broncos were playing could not address the short three-step concepts that we were relying on. If they, if they had it to do over again tomorrow with the knowledge of yesterday's game, they would probably play some different coverages in certain situations. I suspect that Huntley might adjust. He did have the one bad decision. There was pressure on him, and he threw it out into the flats. And Justin Simmons picks that picked. Simmons got two gift um, interceptions yesterday, right? Two, but it really doesn't get any easier than the one that Prochet threw to him. Let me know what you think of my thought. I'm, I guess I'm saying it is quite impressive that Huntley did it. But now looking at the matchup of Huntley and his decision making and the three step drop concepts we were using, three step routes, quick routes, and the coverages they play. Those two things are a good matchup in our favor in that situation. It clearly didn't appear to be as good a matchup for us earlier in the game, although I wonder if we had gone to you know, just throwing the ball short and how long it would have been before the Broncos adjusted, at least on first and second down. Third down was a little bit different situation. 
Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of the video. Next one I'll, I'll have coming out later tonight will be on Roquan Smith and how well he played in the Ravens' 10-9 victory.